A colleague of mine at work, her name is Kate, has just passed her Google Cybersecurity Certificate, but she wanted to know which cybersecurity specialization should she focus on that pays the more money, but also has the most interesting work. She is a student who just did an internship at the company that I work at. But this has made me wonder, what is the best cybersecurity specialization? But more importantly, which one is right for you? Because we're all different individuals. What's best for me is not necessarily what's best for you. But I'll be honest this is something that I struggled with when I was coming up in my career. I went from wanting to be an ethical hacker, ended up doing forensic investigations, then worked in a security operation center and eventually ended up in consulting. So what I did for Kate is I broke down the cyber security specialization into these broad categories. I also explained to her the pros and cons of each specialization but more importantly I also advised her what is best for her. So get your pen and paper ready because I'll take you through that list and I will help you make that same decision. Let's get into it. Starting with the most obvious one, ethical hacking. This is probably why most of us are working in cybersecurity. At some point in our career, we wanted to be hackers. I personally got inspired after I watched the movie Hackers, but I know a lot of you have probably arrived here because you watched something like Mr. Robot. There is no shame in that. We all get inspiration from things that we see, but it should also come at no surprise that real life is so different than the movies. So the pros of being an ethical hacker is you get to do some really interesting work. You get to try to break into companies companies, maybe into banks, and some individuals end up getting into hacking mobile applications and military equipment. The possibilities are endless. You can also go independent, so you can be an independent contractor or you can start your own ethical hacking company and I know some of you would like to do that down the line. The third advantage of a career in ethical hacking is there is so much demand for good ethical hackers and by good I mean those that are intermediate and advanced ethical hackers. Which brings me to the first disadvantage of this career and that is penetration testing or ethical hacking is hard. Getting really good at ethical hacking requires a lot of work, a lot of dedication. It's not something that you'll do from 9 to 5. It's definitely something that you need to eat, breathe and sleep ethical hacking. It requires a ton of work and it's an extremely technical field. Which also means the second disadvantage of that, this is not really a beginner friendly career path. Yes, entry level ethical hacking jobs exist but they are extremely rare. Most ethical hacking jobs require you to have at least the OSCP which is a challenging certificate for people who are new to the field. Now as far as Kate is concerned she actually told me that she wants to do what I do which is consulting and I'll talk about consulting towards the end of this video but what I saw in her is that she is someone who's technically inclined. She told me that her favorite part of the Google Cyber Security Cert was the Python module which is an introduction to programming. So she absolutely loves programming. She loves to put her head down and do technical work. So to me she is probably a good fit to do something like ethical hacking. But if you're wondering what a real ethical hacking look like this is is in my opinion the most realistic ethical hacking scene from a movie. The second cybersecurity specialization is a cyber analyst. This is by far the most common cybersecurity job that you'll ever come across. So if you do a job search and you type the word cyber, chances are most of the results that you'll get are for a cyber analyst. But here is the problem with the cyber analyst role. The title itself is so broad and it can mean many different things. For example, someone with the title cyber analyst in Bank of America can be performing completely different tasks than someone with the exact same title and somewhere like Citibank, for example. So keep in mind that in big organizations chances are the cyber analysts will be performing one specific task but in small to medium sized organizations the cyber analyst is more likely to be performing one or more tasks however some big organizations also don't have a good handle on cyber so just keep in mind that the titles can be misleading so to break it down for Kate I summarized it into four main tasks the first one is incident response this is the person who respond to a hacker when the hacker attacks an organization so they will be responsible for stopping the hacker and eliminating that threat. The second task is threat management. This is the individual who will be responsible to create alerts to detect hackers or to detect malware in the organization or even to detect if someone is trying to steal some data from a company. The third type of task is the threat intelligence. This is the individual or group of individuals who are responsible for gathering intelligence and information about new threats, new hacking group, new malware and new type of attacks. And the fourth 
type is the forensic investigator. This is the person who investigates the hacks. Usually they come after the hack has happened. So they try to assess the damage. Maybe they try to find the person who's responsible for the attacks. And forensic investigator can also work with law enforcement. So they can analyze hard drives or maybe analyze the mobile phone of a criminal. So all of these can be specialties on their own. Or if you work in a small or medium sized organization, you may be performing all of these four tasks. Now the pros of being a cyber analyst is it pays really well and the second thing is there is a huge demand for cyber analysts think about it it takes one hacker to hack a company but it takes a team of cyber analysts to detect and stop the hacker and the third advantage is the work is so varied so if you like programming for example you can spend your time coding and detecting threads or if you don't like coding maybe you like investigations you can investigate crime and analyze hard drives there is something for everyone within the realm of cyber analysts the disadvantages of this work is some environments can be extremely stressful so the work can be like on a 24 by 7 on call rotation so you might end up needing to work weekends maybe after hours and things can go pretty crazy if the company you work for gets hacked and you need to investigate and stop that trust me i've been there it can be exhausting now on the other hand the second disadvantage is sometimes the job is extremely relaxed like i've seen security operation centers where they have 10 or 12 analysts that they are sitting there doing nothing all they do is look through alerts and the months and year pass by and nothing happened. Now, some of you might think that this sounds like a dream job where you get paid to sit down, do nothing. I can promise you it gets old really quickly. But not only that, when the months and years pass by, you lose your skills. And I know people who are in this very same position. They've been a cyber analyst for five, six years and they haven't done much. And now they don't have the confidence to do anything else. So this is something to watch out for. The next one is the cybersecurity engineer. The engineer is an individual who is responsible for installing, configuring, maintaining and supporting cybersecurity tools. This one is a little bit tricky because the tools can be completely different. So a cybersecurity engineer can be the person who's responsible to install and configure the firewalls, but they can also do something like installing an identity and access management tool like a CyberArk, for example, but also the person who is responsible for configuring Active Directory can also be referred to as cybersecurity engineer. So you can start to see a trend here that titles in cybersecurity can be very tricky. And as someone who's trying to get their first cyber security job, this can be really confusing. But bear with me, by the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea on what each specialization do. So the pros of this role is if you're someone who likes to play with tool, to always tinker with tool, configure things, maybe you're the person who's always fiddling with their phone and trying to find new features, new updates, this can be a good role for you. At the same time, the main disadvantage of this role is that it is too broad of a title. So the person who configures and installs firewalls is actually not a cyber security engineer probably should be called the network engineer and the person who configures something like Active Directory or even Microsoft Cloud for example that person should probably be called a system engineer or even a cloud engineer so that title can be really really tricky and the best way I explained this to Kate is I told her if you're someone who likes to troubleshoot problems so if you like to see a machine broken and you like to fix it and see how it works and see and try to find the root cause of this problem then a cyber security engineer might be the job for you the next Next one is a vulnerability management analyst. This is the individual who runs a tool that's called the vulnerability scanner that usually scans for weaknesses in applications and operating systems. And then this individual goes and follows up with different teams to install these fixes. So when you install updates on your phone or on your laptop, these updates, we refer to them as patches and sometimes they fix security issues. So we do the same thing, but on an enterprise level. So in a company, there is an individual that's responsible for following up with teams to make sure that they install the latest updates. That individual is referred to as vulnerability management analyst. Pros of this role is that you get exposure to the entire organization. So you get to work with the network engineers, with the server engineers, with the application developers. It gives you a good holistic view of the organization. The second advantage of this role is that the barriers to entry are really small. So if you don't have any technical experience or any knowledge, this can be a good role for you. So you get your hands dirty, you can do this role while you study for more sets and you do more projects to improve your confidence so you get to apply to more higher level roles. So this role can look really good on your CV and it doesn't need that much technical knowledge. The main disadvantage of this role is that sometimes it can be frustrating because you might run into situations where you keep following up with teams, telling them to install updates but nothing happened and things can be a little bit slow in the world of business. So if you're someone new and fairly enthusiastic and you like to get things done quickly, you might be a little bit frustrated, at least in the beginning. The next one is security education and awareness. The main task of a security and 
and awareness professional is to create and distribute educational materials related to cybersecurity. This is the individual that should educate users on not to click on phishing links or to use complex passwords, for example. Be mindful that this role requires zero technical knowledge, but it requires an excellent communication skills, both written and spoken. You need to be able to communicate in a simple and succinct manner to everyone in the organization because you will get to talk to people who are extremely proficient in programming but you also need to talk to people who have never used a computer in their life in some instances i've had to do that in the past now i made an entire video on this specialization but guess what someone has watched this video he had a marketing background he applied to an education and awareness job and he got that job he had to move from new zealand to australia just for this job his name is sam and he's active on our discord so you can talk to him if you don't believe me the main pros of this job is it can be fairly relaxed in the sense that you don't need to be dealing with nasty hackers or with a cybersecurity incident in the middle of the night and the other advantage is it doesn't require any technical knowledge but the main disadvantages of this job is that in some instances it requires a large amount of writing which in and of itself can be an advantage if you're someone who love writing articles the other disadvantage of this job is that from time to time you may run into the occasional unfriendly user or someone who just doesn't like security but for the most part I found most users to be fairly professional and reasonable to deal with. Now the issue with Kate is that she has excellent communication skills both written and spoken so on paper she looks like someone who's a perfect fit for this role so I could see that some people may try to push her to do this role but I advised her not to do this role and this is a pro tip for you just because you're good at something doesn't mean that you should be doing that something. Most of us are good at more than one task. For example I love driving cars that doesn't mean I'll be a good mechanic. So in Kate's case, yes, she has good communication skills, but I know her heart is in technical work, so she will not enjoy this job. She might do it, she might do really well in that job, but it's not something that she will enjoy. So watch out if you find that you're good at something, that doesn't mean that you will enjoy it. And speaking of communication skills, the next specialization need even more communication skills. It's GRC. The GRC analyst basically conducts risk assessments, audits, and reporting on cybersecurity issues. This role is not technical at all. Your time will be spent on meetings with different teams, with different individuals. Strike, scream, and run. All right, let's try it. and it will be spent on spreadsheets and on reporting. Now, the role of GRC is really, really broad. And like I said, it really depends on the size of the organization and the size of the team and also the maturity of the organization. There is also a difference between junior GRC analyst and someone who's a senior manager doing GRC. So it's a really valid role. The advantages of this role is that, well, it's not technical at all. So if you don't like technical work, then this can be a good job for you. But the main disadvantage of this job is you'll spend all of your time on meeting, on reporting, on spreadsheets and a fair bit of work also in company politics because you will be dealing with a lot of people who will resist what you're trying to do maybe they don't understand why you're doing it so there can be a fair bit of friction there which brings me to the next specialization which is cyber security consulting this is what I'm currently doing at the moment and speaking of meetings and politics my role involves more meetings and more politics than any other specialty out there now the term consultant is a very broad term it refers to the individual who basically goes to help a company solve a problem in my case, the problem is cybersecurity, so I advise them on various cybersecurity issues. And under the umbrella of consulting, you can specialize in things like penetration testing. You can be a penetration testing consultant, or you can be a forensic consultant, or a management consultant. It really, really varies. So think of a consultant as just someone who gives advice to a company on certain issues. But the more experience and the more knowledge you have, the higher level your advice can be. So sometimes I meet with CEOs, or with CISOs, or with CIOs, and I advise them on a holistic approach to the entire organization. So the main advantage of this role is that the work is really, really varied. No two companies are the same. Every company has a different problem and I personally enjoy that. I don't like doing the exact same thing over and over, so it suits my personality. And the second advantage is if you're really good, you can get paid a significant amount. So if I'm helping a company with their five-year cybersecurity strategy that will cost them $5 million, for example, then they will be willing to pay me a large amount of money to help them with that. Now, the main 
biggest advantages of cybersecurity consulting is that it's not for everyone. Some people absolutely hate the fact that the work is different and every client is different. There is also a lot of politics involved. So if you don't like to deal with people or if you can't tolerate certain types of characters, so that can be an extremely stressful job. You will not enjoy it. Because trust me, when you do cybersecurity consulting, this is where you will see the extremely big egos in the IT and cybersecurity industry. So it's definitely something to watch out for because that was my advice to Kate. She said she wanted to do consulting, but from what I've seen of her, she absolutely loves technical work and she doesn't really like to deal with people that much. So to me, yes, she looked up to me. She wanted to do what I do, but maybe she's not going to enjoy it. So I had to explain to her that there are many disadvantages to what I do and it's definitely not for everyone. The next one is a security architect. Speaking of inflated titles, security architect is also another title that's absolutely butchered. So much so that in my opinion, it doesn't mean anything anymore. What do I do? System architecture, networking and security. No one in this house can touch me on that. Okay, that's good to know. But does anyone appreciate that? While you were busy minoring in gender studies and singing a cappella at Sarah Lawrence, I was gaining root access to NSA servers. I was one click away from starting a second Iranian revolution. I actually went to Vassar. I prevent cross-site scripting. I monitor for DDoS attacks, emergency database rollbacks, and faulty transaction handlings. I get a fair bit of comments asking me to talk about a pathway to a security architect, but I know the reason why people ask about security architect is because they see extremely high salaries. Some of the jobs advertised are asking for a security architect. They are paying 200K, some of them even 350 and above. The problem with the title architect is that in the past, it used to mean someone with 15, maybe 20 years of experience plus, because the architect is supposed to design the solution to, to have a higher level view of the organization and where activity these need to go. It's not too different than consulting. In fact, a lot of the work I do in consulting is architecture work. But the problem is, again, in some organizations, I've seen security architects who don't do much or security architects who are hyper specialized in one area. So again, that title is almost meaningless these days. But the other problem with the security architect is certifications are really meaningless at that level of your career. So for example, in my career, certificates at this point don't add any values to me. It might be a good way to learn about a topic, but no one hires me because I have a certain certificate anymore. In the beginning of my career, yes, they were very helpful. Same thing for an architect. No one will hire you to manage a multi-million dollar budget because you have CISSP or CompTIA or whatever certificate you have. They need to see proven experience that you've done this type of work before. And the only way to get it is to gain years and years of experience in the industry. The main advantage of this role, as I mentioned earlier, is the salary. You will be paid a lot of money to do this job. And the second advantage is you will get exposure to the entire business. So as a security architect, you need to have a view of every area of the business, finance, marketing, application, you name it, you should be familiar with it. And the main disadvantages of this role is just like with any higher level role, you will not be doing any technical work. So if you like to do technical work, you might miss it at this stage. I certainly miss doing technical work. But the second disadvantage is politics. At this level of your career, 80, maybe 90% of your time will be spent dealing with politics. It's just the way it is. Now, the biggest challenge that faced Kate is that she can't decide even after all of this explanation, she's still really unsure on which specialty to choose. But my answer to her was that this is completely normal. It's absolutely okay to not be 100% certain how the next 20 years of your life will look like. It's just not the way things work. But the other important thing that I tried to explain to her is a cybersecurity specialization is not a life sentence. It's not so hard to change specializations once you have a few years of experience under your belt. In fact, it's quite normal to continue to develop and learn more skills and improve and once you get to higher level jobs it's completely normal to want to switch specializations maybe to learn more about a certain topic or maybe to try something new so you absolutely don't have to make a decision so early on and if you do it's okay just know that in the long term you're not stuck with this decision but the key thing to remember is whatever specialization you decide on the starting point is the same so if you have no degree or no IT knowledge or no certificates I've laid down a step-by-step -step plan for you to get you started in this video where you will start by building a foundation and from there you can build on top of it which will help you specialize later on down the line so check it out and i'll see you there